Hip hop culture is a global phenomenon, topping charts, influencing art, and setting fashion trends across the world. Today, the influence has spread to Asia, where, as with elsewhere, it has had huge success and become part of mainstream culture. I'm Young Raja, and this is the story of the rise of hip hop in Asia. But hip hop lives. You ready, homie? DJ Cool Herc, the godfather of hip hop. He began spinning records at local block parties in New York's Bronx area in the 1970s. What made him stand out was his technique. He would use two turntables instead of one, allowing him to extend the length of the instrumental parts of the songs, or the break so that people could dance longer. Soon, due to the Jamaican tradition of toasting or talking over records, rapping soon sprang up to accompany the DJing. And because hip hop was so accessible and cheap to make, it took off real quick. And now we have movies, fashion, and even video games based around the culture. But y'all already know all of that. We are here to talk about how hip hop made it big in Asia. The song Rapper's Delight was released in 1979 and was an immediate hit across the world. And that includes in Asia. It was so popular in the Philippines that there was not one but two cover versions. The first, by stand-up comedian Diorz Javier, was a parody called Na On Sen Delight. This was followed by Ispra Ken Delight by local rap pioneer Vincent Dafalon. Not to be left out, Japan also jumped on the rapper's delight bandwagon. The song was a huge hit on the local disco scene. But the local record labels blew off hip-hop as a passing fan. That is, until Japanese electro-pop group Yellow Magic Orchestra showed up. Their early 80s music was so popular, they even got invited on to Soul Train in the US. So Japan and some other Asian countries picked up some credibility in the hip-hop game. But for the next few years, the scene quietened down. Until a bunch of early hip-hop influenced movies arrived in Asia and changed the scene yet again. Hip-hop culture slowly gained widespread acceptance in the US, meaning we got a ton of movies about it. In 1983, the movie Wild Style dropped in Japan and the country's first hip-hop club opened in Shibuya in 1986. The dance culture of hip-hop was more popular than the rap aspect in Japan, basically because rapping is harder in Japanese. Roughly a year later, in 1984, the movie Break-In was released in Malaysia, sparking interest in hip-hop culture. Breakdancing blew up, and the biggest local movie of the year, Azura, even had a breakdancing scene in it. Over in China, things were a bit more difficult. There were no official releases, but the movie Beat Street was supposedly smuggled into China through US embassy staff, giving the Chinese their first ever taste of hip hop. It didn't really catch on though. It wasn't until 1994 when CCTV5 started broadcasting NBA games along with the background music that people got a proper taste of rap music. Hip-hop was still a fringe culture in Asia. The real revolution didn't happen until the 90s. Because of the presence of American military bases and the American-based Filipino sending mixtapes home, the Philippines was quick to adopt the music. Self-styled Pinoy rap king Francis Magalona was the first to find major success with his debut album Yo in 1990. Others lie while some tell the truth. Other MCs and rap groups built on the sound. And because of their familiarity with the language, spit verses in a mixture of various Philippine dialects together with English. Over in Malaysia, in 1989, a group that would become known as Crash Cause released possibly the first ever rap mixtape in Asia. Titled Pump It Up, it was a huge hit in the booming club scene, selling more than 10,000 copies. Throughout the 80s, hip-hop in Japan was mainly associated with DJing. 
1994, rap goes commercial in Japan. The first hit was Shut Up Pass Konya wa Boogie Baku, and it sold over 1 million copies, and J Rap was born. Meanwhile, in China, one of the late adopters of hip hop, an artist known as Chui Chie, was credited with producing the first Chinese language song to feature rap style content, although he was a rock artist. The real breakthrough came in 1992 with China's first rap group, DD Rhythm. They were soon joined by Xie Dong and his 1993 song La La La. Today, there isn't a country in Asia that hasn't been touched by hip hop. The fact that a musical culture from halfway across the world has been able to blend so well with locals is crazy, but speak volumes about the music's accessibility. I'm Young Raja, and this is the story of the rise of hip hop in Asia.